screen test. Tom Wopat, John Schneider. Take one. I don't like this. Not a smidgen. Well, all we're doing is looking around. So I heard about these auditions for Dukes. My agent said, well, you know, you're not, you're, you're, uh, we thought you were going to be able to go in, but you're not going to be able to go in because they're looking for people from Georgia who are between 24 and 30 years old. And I'm, at that time, I'm from New York, and uh, I was 18 years old. So I said, well, let's lie. <laughs> let's act. I came to New York in 1977 from Wisconsin. I got an agent at the, at the end of the year. Um, I was here actually a short time and was fairly lucky and did some work off Broadway and um, and I was always auditioning you know as things came along and in October of, of 78 I, I went in for an audition of Dukes of Hazard. I walked in to CBS there were 30 people sitting around I stood up and I delivered my lines and there was complete silence after I finished my scene. Okay, that's it, I lost the thing. They don't like, they don't get me, they don't like me. I don't have blonde hair. I'm not like the curvaceous uh, Dolly Parton. I am out of here. And then all of a sudden, this one man stands up who I later realized was met and realized, found out that he was the president of the network. And he started clapping, clapping. Then I got the word that I was going to come out to California and screen test. And I'm supposed to come in on a Thursday, screen test on Friday, and then I'd know f late Friday afternoon and be back at home on, on uh, Saturday. But it took five and a half weeks. It was five and a half weeks of going to the network and rehearsing with Guy Waldron, who's a great, great guy, the creator of Dukes, uh, trying to get the right grouping together. And, and uh, what an amazing experience. And I went in to read for Dukes and actually read for John's part originally, for Bo. But they asked me, I got a call later in the afternoon after I'd done the reading on Wednesday saying, do you, you want to fly to, to L.A. and read for this? And, so, you know, I'm a kid. I didn't know any better. I'm sure, why not? And uh, so I flew out there on a Wednesday night. We, uh, I met with John Thursday and we worked on the stuff a little bit and we did the screen test on Friday and got the part. I wanted to get the feel of this, this southern, southern guy, so I borrowed the pickup truck. I went out and I got a six-pack of Pabst Blue Ribbon, and I had a, a great old worn-out uh, Budman T-shirt. told him I was from uh, Snailville, which I had gotten wrong. It's Snellville. I didn't even know that, but neither the day. And I uh, told him I was 24 from Snailville, Georgia, and uh, wondered what they were looking for. And read the thing, did okay, but there, there was apparently something they saw in that kind of strange redneck guy that didn't even leave his beer in the truck that they were very interested in. And uh, come to find out many years later, it, it, uh, it was told to me that when, when Phil Mandelker saw that, he said, that's, that's the guy. I got the part. I got the crazy part. I got the Daisy Duke part. They called and they said, that is it. They want you. Um, and they sent me to Georgia immediately. Ain't that pretty? You're hanging there like that? We had wonderful directors. And it was interesting. Most of our directors were the old timers. The guys who had worked all the funny shows and worked all the, the heavy action shows, and they loved coming in and doing a Dukes because it was kind of like going back for them in the early days when they, when they were doing the high action stuff. They were getting to do in miniature what they were, had made a career doing. We were allowed to, to take chances to, to do new things on television, to shoot the stunts and the action as if it were a feature film. We had two camera crews going at all time. We then realized that we were going to have to have a production system like they'd never had before. And so we had, we were the first television show to have a full-time second unit. That is to say, they were doing stunts five days a week. The first thing that happened was God smiled on us and gave us Paul Baxley. 
who was one of the great stunt gaffers. And the Baxley family had been in the stunt business for a very long time. When we wrote this out, Warner Brothers was wise enough to see and ask the network, said, we're gonna to have to have more budget here because we've got a lot of stunts. We put major stunts, three major stunts in one hour. That had never been done. Our production crew had their own way of doing things. Um, and by and large, it was, it was confrontational, but not, not um, in a vicious way. It was just, that was, that was the dynamic of how we did things. They wanted to do things a certain way, and the actors would try and, and get as much reality or as much integrity into the show as we could. And uh, so that was kind of how it worked. I never saw among our actors one quarrel in seven years. If they had differences, they settled them among themselves. You had differences with the studio, fight with the director, fight with act writers, of course. Those are the people you fight with. Our actors respected each other so much, we never once saw that. Well, when you put all that together, and I don't mean all the sweetness and light, I mean it was a brutal schedule with difficult shooting. But at the end of the day, everybody's smiling, having a drink, having a cigar, and we wrap and we go the next day. And that's the kind of attitude you have to have for that show to work. And that's what we had. If we hadn't had that, our heroes behind the scene, we wouldn't have had Dukes of Hazard in more than two years. You couldn't have survived it. They not only survived, they thrived on it. They made us better. If I could say that I had defining moments of when we were a smash, uh, it was when we started getting fan mail about, about the second or third week, and that all of the fan mail was saying the exact opposite of what the critics had said. I knew that something really special was about to happen, and um, it was great. But can I say, oh, I knew that it was going to be a a hit and it was going to last forever and we're going to be friends for life? No. I was 18. What did I know? When's lunch? <laughs> we weren't that far into it and we were trying to get something for Daisy to wear. And Kathy Bach said, I'm going to fix these shorts the way I want to. And so she cut out the pair of shorts and she made those first Daisy Dukes. And somebody said, Kathy's uh, cut the things off and she's gonna, and we said, okay, I was standing on the set and Kathy walked by and I was talking with somebody else. She comes by, she's got these shorts on, she's got the high heels on, she's wearing pantyhose and she looked like a million bucks and she walked by and I looked at her and I said, surely we've got a hit. <laughs> and I remember his reaction was, I think we do, and that's all the farther we'd gone. And that, but those moments told us, and the mail told us, that yes, we were hitting them. Our scripts were saying exactly what the people wanted to hear. Yeah, that should hold them. I'm sorry we had to do this, Daisy. So. Two episodes in, I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm filming, everything's great. I'm getting along with the cast. I meet Tom Wolpat, who is a doll and a, really an incredible artist, singing every day, playing guitar every day. John's playing, everybody's, everybody's having a ball. We're just having so much fun. And then all of a sudden, in troops, 20 different blonde-haired girls. And the word was, why in the heck did this girl get cast? She is not going to be a, a, a popular. She is not Farrah Fawcett. She is not Cheryl Ladd. She is not Dolly Parton. She is not a blonde. She's not, get rid of her. I had asked Guy Walter and I said, how did all that happen? The network liked me and you like me, but they're, now they're making me have like one line in the show and what happened? He said, well, 
you know, they don't believe in you the way I do. I think there were second thoughts at the network all the time uh, for the first year. There were second thoughts about the show, about what are we doing, and then all of a sudden, Kathy and Tom and John are appearing on every publication, and the, and the letters are coming in, and, and nothing will shut up a network executive like audience response that are in love with your character. And so uh, I didn't hear anything after that. Now don't you two run away. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't overplay it much, did you? Didn't it? I got the clothes. Ah. Alright. See, we can lift up out of this. Oh, the year that we left. Well, that was kind of uh, precipitated by a bunch of different events. We felt we were not getting treated nicely, and also we thought it was a time artistically where we could make some demands. And as a result, we ended up uh, handing the show to a couple of other guys for 16 shows. I knew that when they left, we were going to be in trouble. We were going to have a big say. Dukes was not a show in which you could lose any one of Bo Lick or Daisy. You just can't do that. Uh, you would be cutting the heart out of the show, and when you repair it, you better repair it with something good. And my feeling was when we, when, uh, and nobody asked, well, what do you think? Uh, other than that, when you're going to replace these guys, don't replace them with lookalikes. Go some other way. Uh, get two more guys. Uh, get two other cousins. Whatever you can. But if you're going to try to imitate them, you can't imitate these two guys. They're in the public's heart and mind by this time. If you're a Dukes fan, that's it. That's the family. Who do you replace members of your family with? And so that was, I felt, was not going to work. In the episode where we came back, we had one scene with all four of us. And then, boom, they were gone. It was sweet. Well, well you take care of that. Y'all take care yeah. of yourself. <laughs> we love you, Will. All right, then. Keys of General Lee. Thanks. This is kind of like changing to the guard at Buckingham Palace. There you go. There you go, buddy. All right, man. Take care of yourself. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> Thanks for holding down the fort, all right? Keep right, between the ditches, all right? <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> all right, buddy. All right. Uh, Vance, the door's open. <laughs> kind of cracked this, no? Yeah. Don't be strange. All right, he's from here. If I was going to chase you up, Bart, will you stop by and say hey, all right? You got it. All right. Yeehaw! What a pair. The two guys who came in, they tried very hard, and, and they really, but it, that was a no win for them. It just wasn't going to happen. I kind of felt for the other guys, just in the sense that they made them watch. They made them watch episodes of us to try and capture our camaraderie and that kind of thing, which is like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, what a way to go about things. And so I was very happy when the boys came back. And when the boys came back, the ratings were up in a week. I mean, it was just that simple. And in the final result, in the final analysis, it should have been handled differently. We were young. We got some advice that wasn't exactly accurate. And uh, it probably should never have come to that point. 